All right, guys, so today I'm going to talk about thermoluminescence dating, or TL. This is essentially just the relationship between crystalline minerals and heat, so let's get right into it. First, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of thermoluminescence dating, and we can't do that without talking about Robert Boyle. In 1633, Boyle first described thermoluminescence dating to the Royal Society, explaining to them that his body heat had he illuminated a diamond. Then we move on to Farrington Daniels. We jump way in the future to the 1950s. He proposed the use of thermoluminescence to date pottery. And then we move on to Oxford University, who just a couple years later in the 60s and 70s really refined the idea that Farrington Daniels had proposed and refined that technology and created what we know today as thermoluminescence dating. All right, let's talk about how thermoluminescence dating actually works. On the screen, I have quartz, I have feldspar, and I have salcite. Probably thinking, what do these have to do with each other? Well, these are all minerals that illuminate when exposed to heat or radioactive material. That means that the way that Robert Boyle's diamond heated up and illuminated when he held it close to him is the same way that these all work too. And this is what we find in pottery and in sediments. And that's how we find thermoluminescent dating possible. But let's get into the actual equation. And yes, thermoluminescent dating does have essentially an equation. It's age equals the amount of thermoluminescence divided by the dose of thermoluminescence it should be getting per year. Let's say we fired up a piece of pottery. Whatever it starts with in thermoluminescence, it builds upon that each year. And so we take that number that we think it should be getting each year, divide it by the overall amount, and through that we have a range at which we think that this piece of sediment or artifact is aged. And that's all it is. All right, now, so let's get into the positives. It's much more useful than carbon dating because we can use it for a longer range of years. Many artifacts can be dated this way because many artifacts are made out of raw materials. It's also relatively cheap compared to other dating techniques. It's between 300 to whatever price amount because it depends on the amount, how big, how small, etc. And it can date pottery directly, unlike a lot of other dating techniques we have. Now let's talk about the negatives. It has to be a raw material, no living organisms allowed. It must not be exposed to heat or light beforehand because that can restart the thermoluminescence building process. Sediments are actually more expensive to date because they're smaller and harder. And although it's pretty exact, it's not exact because we're going off of our ideas.